after this worship service, there is a planning meeting for the Harvest Festival in the fall. So if you are able to attend that, that will start at 1215 in the Davidson Room. Today's church picnic, which is, uh, starts at 5 o'clock, we have moved the location. It will be here at the church because of the impending rain. So that is from 5 to 8 tonight here in the church. If you have not signed up yet, you still can come tonight. It's $3 uh, for adults um, for that. So please join us tonight at 5 o'clock in the Davidson Room. Tuesday night, we have our Testament at the Tavern Bible study. Um, just keep in mind that that location has changed from Amanda's because it is no longer open. Um, we will be uh, meeting at 7 o'clock at Skeeter's on the Black Horse Pike. That's Tuesday night. Wednesday night is a youth group at 6.30 for 6th through 12th graders. The last adult Bible study for this um, group that we're meeting with right now is Sunday. Uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday night at 7. And then 7.30 on Wednesday night is United Methodist Women. We'll be going to St. Maria Goretti Church in Runnymede. Saturday morning, we have our clothing, our community clothing distribution here at the church. That's from 9 to 12. If you are able to come and help out during any of those times, it would be greatly appreciated. Starting July 1st, our Sunday school will be moving to our summer, summer schedule. Uh, they are in need of teachers, so we can give our normal Sunday school teachers a break. If you are able to help out with that, there's a sign-up sheet um, on the door of the chapel. And there's contact information for Barbara Bolden or uh, Naomi Walker that you can call them if you have any questions. There are many other announcements in the bulletin um, that you can take a look at as you are able throughout the week. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. me and delivered me from all my fears look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed this poor soul soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them oh taste and see that the Lord is good happy are those who take refuge in him oh fear the Lord you his holy ones for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. As you are able, please stand as we sing our, per our processional hymn number 400, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing.
Monica. <laughs> Let us join together in our opening prayer found on the first page of your bulletin this morning. Let us pray together. Govern all by thy wisdom, O Lord, so that my soul may always be serving thee as thou dost will, and not as I may choose. Do not punish me, I beseech thee, by granting that which I wish or ask, if it offend thy love, which would always live in me. Let me die to myself, so that I may serve thee. Let me live to thee, who is thyself art the true life. Amen. Today we recognize our graduates in the life of our church today, and I believe some here, a couple have been at earlier services today. Let me see who I have here. Wyatt McCann is graduating from eighth grade from Mary E. Volt School in Runnymede. Okay. Come on down, Wyatt. And I know Dylan Esther is here, a graduate of Our Lady of Good Counsel. Let's see, anybody else on my list here at this time? And Theo. Theo. Dr. Theodos, how do you say it, Theo? Theodosia? Theodosia? Oh, Edwards, that's Theo's daughter's graduating. Her sister's going to stand in for her here today. For her, she's not able to be here. She got her doctorate in education from the University of Maryland. Okay, so congratulations. Let's give this crowd a round of applause for that. Congratulations. Congratulations. And for your sister, congratulations. Okay, you can take your seats. Thank you. And if you would please stand and greet those around you this morning. Good morning again. <laughs> kind of said hi to you. Morning, sir. Uh, choir, when, when you're done singing, just stay in place. Don't leave. All right, every choir, just stay in place, and then you can go back down, whatever you want to. But just stand up there with me. All right. All right. All right. Hey. Morning. Uh, oh, okay. I was going to say, it looked like you were going to fall. I was worried about you. I know, but as you're twisting on the steps, so. You never know. Watch, watch you fall over the next step, right? Well, it's not like I didn't break my ankle at the Presbyterian Church. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Good to see you. Is this a lineup on the front row here, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> And you are? I am Amy Frank's mom. Hi, Amy. Hi, good to see you. Hi, Amy. Good to see you. you done? I know. Put them in my office or on the office desk. I, yeah. I can't get in there. Well, you can put it in my, put it in my mailbox in the office. Yes, oh. dear. Oh. He's going to work with me. Excuse me. I'll call you. No, they really were not that bad that because it was me. Hello, Sage. How you doing? Hello, Krista. Hello, hello. Oh, how you doing? See you. I think I'm on, Edward. Uh, I'm still on, I think. Hi, Tammy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Hi. I guess, you yeah. Thank you. 
We have one other we have one other graduate with us today here that I omitted went to. Alexia Becker is here. She's graduating from Yellen in Linden Wall Township, right? Congratulations there. And now we'll have a choir.
contractor as they finish the year of singing. So we're here to celebrate her ministry today with us during this time. And thank God for the gift that she has been and the leadership she's given to our choir over the years. And I ask the choir to stand there as her backup crowd there just to support her along the way and, you know, as a team working together. So Susan has always been a blessing to work with, cooperative, understanding, and always open to whatever we need to be doing. So let us praise God for her service among us with a round of applause here. Come on. And from the congregation, a little gift for you there. And some cards here from oh, our congregation as they have gathered together here. So we appreciate all you've done and God bless you. Okay, quiet, you're free. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Before we have our oh, the scripture today, just a couple announcements. I know a lot of people came in after the original announcements here today. Just want to draw your attention that our picnic plans for this afternoon are no longer going to be at the Red Bank Battlefield in National Park because of the rain and weather this day. We're going to meet here in the church at 5 o'clock in the Davidson Room. So bring your dish, your covered dish, whatever you're sharing for meal tonight. Come on out at 5 o'clock. If you have not registered, you're okay. You can certainly come as $3 a person. Come on out and share together and a fun evening. Our summer schedule begins on the 24th with our worship schedule, 9.30 in the morning, 9.30 traditional here, 9.30 contemporary in the Davidson Room. And also on the 21st, we begin our Choose in the Park. If you've never been out to the park service with us, now is the time to try it. It's a great all time to worship out in the park. Every Thursday night, 6.30 p.m., it's called the Dog Park. It's Timber Creek Park right on Choose Landing Road there. You go back to the parking lot, go into the woods, and you'll find the place of worship. There's a little playground area right there. There's a hard surface, so if you need to travel by with any other uh, ways of help to get there, you can go on a hard surface back, or you can climb up steps to go directly to the park service there. Also, if you would like to order scripts through the church, they're due in the office today. And also, you notice that we have a special event just planned yesterday. John Toppy is the general manager of the oh, Batucci's up in Mount Laurel. We're going to have a little get-together on the 24th. Everybody go, and if the more people spend, the more that will come back to the church there as that. So we'll be gathering there after church on the 24th of June. And so we have a choose rally there. And I know some people would not drive there. I know it's too far for some and not sure. If you're willing to drive other people, let me know. Or if you need a ride, let me know. And I will connect so everyone who would like to go can get there on the 24th. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 5. Be careful then how you live not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Gracious God, we thank you for this time that we gather to worship and honor your name. Fill us and strengthen us by the power of your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, everyone wants to know the will of God. Or maybe not. You know, we know the will of God. About 90 to 95% of the will of God can be found in the Bible itself. 
But then there's that other 10% that sometimes, how do we find the answer? What kind of job should I get? Or what should I be doing? Or who should I marry? Or where do I live in retirement? And we sort of want to follow and listen what God's direction is in our lives. And we often say, how do I know what to do next? Or how do I know that I'm really listening to the will of God in my life? So the Apostle Paul, writing to the church at Ephesus in our scripture lesson this morning, identifies a portion of God's will for all believers here. First of all, it says live wisely. Live wisely. Do we all live wisely or maybe we live chaotically? But you know, if we follow what scripture says about living wisely, living wisely, as we hear in the beginning of our scripture, it says, be careful then how you live as un, not as unwise people, but as wise. Wisdom is not simply knowledge. It is knowing how to use the knowledge we have. The wisdom is appropriating the knowledge that God has given to us and using it in an appropriate way. Knowledge is informational, but wisdom refers to how we put it all together. What is our skill? What is our ability to put it all together in our lives? The definition of wisdom is a practical application of knowledge so we can enjoy life at its best. God gives us wisdom so we can live our lives fully each and every day in our lives. In all of life, God's will for us is to live in the way that is pleasing to God, that is pleasing to God and to the world. We live in a crazy world. All you have to do is spend one week watching the news and you could go bonkers every day. We never know what's coming out next, whether it's a new event happening in our world, whether it's the latest tweet coming from one person or the other in our world today. We wonder, Lord, what's going on? How crazy can this world get in the midst of all the challenges? And this week we were confronted with two well-known personalities who both ended their lives with suicide this week due to depression. And you know, so often in the church, we don't talk about that. You know, when we ask for prayer requests, we say, will you pray I'm getting my hip operated on? Will you pray for Aunt Sally, she's got the flu? But how often do we really pray for people, pray for me, I'm depressed. Pray for me, I've got a mental illness. So often that's become a taboo illness in the life of the church, and we don't talk about it enough, but we need to come to grips that people struggle today. There are many people today struggling how to live their lives fully in the way they should be living their lives. They wonder how are they going to face the challenges that are all around them. Yes, depression, mental illness are real problems in our world today. And we need to live wisely and we need to be with the people and help them and care for them. Not look at people as if they are less important than we are, but to say, how can we reach out to those who are really struggling in our world today? You know, wisdom is a better investment than silver or gold because she never fails to pay interest. Wisdom pays, so live by it. Live wisely, live caringly, live lovingly in all that you do. And redeem your time. The scripture goes on and says in verse 16, making the most of the time because the days are evil. You know, we all have a whole day to live. Do we live wisely? Do we really live our days as if our days are important? Do we really celebrate each moment of the day or do we say, I'm not getting out of bed today, I can't face the day. I'm just going to lay back and let the world pass me by. But do we want to miss one opportunity that God has given to us to live fully each and every day? Every moment in our lives are important. Every moment is key to who we are and what we are doing in the midst of our lives. It is important to know that every moment we spend with loved ones, with people around us, are a gift from God. Every moment we spend with our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, with our moms, our dads, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, are important. Every moment can be redeemed in Jesus Christ. Every moment is key to living in the power and the love of God through Jesus Christ. As they even walk down the aisle with their Cheerios there. Every moment is a blessing and is a gift for us. 
Paul reminds us that time is precious and priceless. Precious and priceless. Grandma, Grammy, you better go. She's walking you out now. She's reached for your hands. So see, the video is going to take you people walking out of church there too. All right. <laughs> God's will is for us to take every moment seriously. Every moment is a gift from God, amen? Every moment. And don't miss a moment of the great opportunities that God has for you. Don't miss an opportunity to share a kind word with somebody. Don't miss an opportunity to smile at somebody. Do you notice how the world is so uptight today? They need somebody to know that they care. Just last week, it's a joke in our household. We were leaving BJ's after shopping. And you know, the guy or gal that stands at the door and they have to look in your car and this list and then stamp that. You know, it must be a tough job. I feel for those people because most probably people snarl at them or whatever. I said, well, you just have yourself a nice day. So I walk out there and says, why did you say that? I said, well, I want him to have a nice day because it's probably a pretty boring job. You see in that door, click, click, all day long. You know, a little smile here or there, a little good word for people can make someone say, let's redeem our time as if the time is given to us by God and we use every moment to touch people's lives with the love of God. Do I get an amen? amen. God's will is for us to take every time and every moment of our lives seriously. As a bank motto gave this advice, take care of the pennies and the dollars will take care of themselves. That statement could be reworded to say, take care of the minutes and the days will take care of themselves. Or as an old poem goes, I only have a minute, just 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it. Did it seek it? Did it choose it? I must suffer if I love it, lose it. Give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute but eternity is in it. Every moment is key. Just recently in this past year, we saw the death of David Cassidy at the age of 67. Probably from dementia, but then some people believe it's probably from all the abuse with the drugs and alcohol over his life. You hear us, here you had a man who grew up in an entertainment family. His parents were entertainers. He rose up. He was in movies. He did many different things. And how many people remember the Partridge family? How many people of the Partridge family generation that you saw David Cassidy in? His fame, his success, and his money did not insulate him from the problems of life. He became, he abused alcohol and drugs in his life and led to his early demise there. Yes, what a way to lose your life. Let's live every day as if it really counts. Even if we lose our life early in our lives, let's make every day God's day and God's moment for our lives to live fully until that day that we are called home to eternity. Amen? Amen. Live every day as if today's the last day of your life on this earth and make a difference in that day as you touch the lives of those around you. Squeeze all the life you can out of the present. Redeem every moment. And then we come in this passage about being filled. And if we look at verse 18, do not get drunk with wine, for that is the botry, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's will is that we get under the influence of the Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of God is with us. And today, once again, we come to this baptismal font. Isn't it fun when we come to do a baptism? I love baptism Sundays because it's a time when we pray and we pray God's blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we, every time the Son is baptized, he or she is baptized in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that is powerful for all who have been baptized, have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, the power of God among us. And how awesome that is. And today, as Addison is sacked out right now during this sermon, moving her cute little lips there, saying, oh my, she doesn't know what's coming next. But as she's baptized, we celebrate her being filled with the Spirit. We all are filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled and empowered by the God's Spirit among us. To be filled means 
that the filling of the Spirit is a work of God. We are in God's care. We are filled with the Spirit when we choose to be under the influence of it. As they say in Chicago, the oh, trains as they go, the downtown Chicago, as the trains run through, they run on three rails, two for the wheels and one for the electricity. The electricity is always there, but the train doesn't move unless it, there's a contact with that third rail. Touch that rail and the train moves. Pull away from that rail and the train goes nowhere. That is the third rail for our lives. It's this Holy Spirit. For as the Holy Spirit guides our lives, we are moved and empowered to be God's people in God's world today to care for those who are struggling, to care for those who are struggling with depression, mental illness, struggles in their lives, that we are there to care and to love as Jesus has loved each and every one of us. May we be filled with the Spirit. May we live wisely. May we live as if we can redeem every moment of every day of our lives through the glory of God. And may we be filled with the Spirit of God in all that we do. And may we, through this sacrament of baptism today, renew our experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit on our baptism day. And may we live by the Spirit day in and day out. For we pray this all in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your power working among us, your wonder-working power that fills us. May we live wisely. May we redeem every moment. And may we be filled with your Spirit. In the name of Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us stand together as we are able and sing hymn number 402, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. Okay. 
together in an attitude of prayer. And I'll lift one prayer concern up, and then during the prayer time, you can lift additional names up, as well as the names that you'll find on page 9 in our bulletin. Remember the Huftel family, as today they have to, oh, they have a premature great-grandchild of Laura and Ken's, born how many months ago? Two months ago, three months ago, Laura? Two, three months now, very premature. The due date wasn't even here yet. Child is not doing well at all, Addie, and they have to remove life support today. So it's very hard on the family. So be in prayer for all of them. It's Mark and Wendy's granddaughter there. So if you know Mark and Wendy. So surround the family in your prayer through a very difficult day before them. May we pray. Loving and gracious God, we come together thanking you that you are the God of our lives and you call us to live wisely, to live each moment fully, and to be filled by the power of your Holy Spirit, guided in our lives to follow you, to love you, and to seek your will and your way in our lives. But Lord, we pause for the needs of those who are hurting and struggling this day with physical, mental, emotional, and grief issues in their lives. As we've already lifted up the Huftel family, we pray for your peace to be with them through the difficult time before them. And here now, as we lift up additional names and concerns before you, Christ in your mercy. And Lord, we have been blessed abundantly. We thank you for all the joys that we have. May we lift up our joys and thanksgivings before you at this time. for all of our graduates, for all the children on this Children's Day. Christ in your mercy, we thank you, we praise you, we give you all honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray when we come together, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As many of you might remember, especially those old timers among us like myself who grew up in the church, remember that on this day, we celebrated Children's Day. We would have a big pageant in Sunday school and in church. Anybody remember doing that? Anytime? Yes. And we'd have a great time of celebrating. Unfortunately, we sort of lost Children's Day, but I still like to lift that up because it's a day that was established. It was founded in Merchantville. The pastor of Trinity Church in Merchantville, or in Trinity Methodist Episcopal Church at that time, had lost a child, and as a way following up in ministry to children. And there's a beautiful stained glass window in that church in commemoration of Children's Day. So that's why we recognize our graduates. We get to have a baptism this day. We celebrate the importance of our children among us. Yes, we have our day for moms, we have our day for dads, and we also have our day for children that we celebrate the gift that all of our children are, whether they are our children, or our grandchildren, or our great-grandchildren. Anybody here have great-great-grandchildren? 
Okay, just checking. No, not yet. Okay, and we celebrate that. But today now we will have our, how about ladies, if you want to see the baptism better, you can come over to over here. If that's, do you want to see the baptism? You, all three can come stand right here. Then you don't have to look there. You can stand right there. All right, just come on out so you can stand there. All right. And we will now celebrate our service of baptism. If you return in the hymnal to page 39. Page 39. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church and incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. This morning, I present Addison Emily for baptism. She and her parents and godparents can come forward at this time. Okay, you all face me here now, and I will ask you the following questions. On behalf of the whole church, I ask each of you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and the power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. Will you nurture your daughter in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. Will. Congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Amen. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Addison with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. If you're able, please stand and let us repeat together the Apostles' Creed. Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare to pray the prayer over the water, it's also been noted that the rose on the table in the front, oh, congregation may be seated. <laughs> Didn't even know you were standing there for a minute. Okay, there you go. The rose on the table up front is in loving memory of Stacy's grandmother, Mildred Priest, and her father, Jim Fisler. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Eternal Father, nothing existed but chaos. You swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through the water. After flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. 
In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations, declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin, clothe them in righteousness, and throughout their lives that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. What name have you given your daughter? Addison Emily Corrado. Addison Emily. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, Addison, look at choir. There's the choir. There's the acolytes. You could be an acolyte someday. Yeah. And we welcome Addison as our newest baptized member of Choose United Methodist Church. <laughs> May we do all in our power to live before her the gospel of Jesus Christ and share God's love with her in all that we do through Sunday school and youth group and the ministries of your church as we live and celebrate that she is a child of yours, filled by your spirit and your love. Okay, here's a photo off of the family, everybody. Okay, here we go. Smile, Addison. Everybody got their pictures? Okay, there we go. You'll be looking at those pictures some days to remember your baptism. There we go, okay. Okay, please let us continue in the service on page 43. Look at that, she's an angel. I guess it's she, I mean, she, okay, got that, all right. All right, let's continue the service. Everybody have that before you. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated in the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members in the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commit to, commend to you, Addison, to your love and to your care, do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. Thanks for what God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ. In this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Thanks for that, doing a peace, man. And now may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. And you are very good. Yes, yes. Okay. okay, you may be seated. And here's your certificate there. Dad, here you can take that. There you go, you're welcome. Okay, Acolytes, you can go take your seats. Okay, go ahead. And at this time, I would like to ask our ushers to come forward, forward with our ritual of friendship books and we will also have our offering. Let us pray for our offering this morning. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You're an abundant God and out of your great mercy you have given us so much. We give you this offering today. With it we, with it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Take it and use it for the, your kingdom and your glory. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
filled with the Spirit of God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Every time I feel the Spirit, let us sing together. Okay, hold it down here so the Bible is like that. Perfect. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Upon the mountain my Lord spoke, out of Okay, fire and smoke. 